Welcome to unboxing and review. Today I have a new budget bezel smartphone. It's called the Bluebo S1. The phone cost around 150 US dollar. I will leave the links in the description below. And let's start with the unboxing. So please stay tuned and consider to subscribe to our channel. In the box you have the smartphone itself and two small boxes. In the first box we have the same Agic tool, warranty card, quick start guide screen protector and silicone back case which is very good to include this in the boxes because you will not find any accessories for this one the second box include type c to 3.5 millimeter headphone adapter power adapter and usb type c cable the device weight 168 gram the dimension is 144 millimeter by 76.5 millimeter and thickness is 8.8 .8 millimeter the phone is easy to grip, easy to reach the sides and corners, even with one hand. It's nice design, almost buzzless, from three sides only, but you still have the chin. The screen covers 90% of the phone body. It's 5.5 inch full HD, 1920 by 1080, 480 BBI. It's made of Gorilla Glass 4, double layer touch panel. 5 points multi-touch, it works with the wet and gloved hands. The phone is double-sided curved design, the screen colors is great and clear from any angle. You can hardly see the ear base speaker and the proximity sensor. The front camera rotated upside down, it's 5 megapixel, switch it to 8 megapixel. In the back we have dual camera, 13 megapixel autofocus, switch it to 16 megapixel standard lens, plus 3 megapixel lens for depth perception with LED flashlight. The dual camera is meant to focus the foreground and blur the background. The device camera is not that great. You have several modes. First one is the video mode, photo mode, and you can switch between the dual lens from here. Also you have the face beauty, blur, mono, panorama, and pro mode, which allows you here to adjust the brightness, the ISO, and the aperture. In the front camera you have to turn the phone upside down for better result and you have here also video mode, photo, face beauty and mono mode. The fingerprint sensor is not that fast, they mention it's 0.1 second speed. I think it's a little bit slow, sometimes not responding. On the right side there is the volume control and the power button. On the left side we have the dual SIM tray, down we have the type C board and the speaker which is not the best speaker also. You can change the theme or the wallpaper for the device by touching and hold the screen. Also you can show or hide the navigation bar by press the arrow down to hide it and swipe up to show. In the notification tab you will find bunch of shortcuts you can adjust it also from here. The setting of the device is similar to most of the Android phones. You have some gestures. The gesture motion you can silent the call by turning the phone and answer the call by swing when incoming call. Also you have the system motions, three fingers down to take a print screen, three fingers up to open the camera, two fingers lower or upper to adjust the volume, double tap the home button to lock the screen. In addition of gesture unlock, double click to wake, slide up to unlock, slide down to camera, slide slip to cut the song, you can draw M to play or boost music, you can also draw C to open the phone dial. E to open the browser, O to open the Play Store, W to open the messages, and finally Z to open the clock. The phone is running Android 7.0 Nougat. It has 64 GB internal storage. Out of this, you will find only 56 GB free. The CPU is Helio B25, 4 GB of RAM, and Mali 880 GPU. It's more than enough to perform great in the games. There is no overheating, it has 3500 milliamp battery, it's almost enough for one day use without gaming or using the camera for a long time. I think the device is very good for this price, you'll find the links in the description below. That will be all for now, thank you for watching and see you next video.